I often get asked the question by my patients and by family members, how do we treat visual snow syndrome? There is many different ways of treating visual snow syndrome. We are getting very close. There is a lot of research going on and, and we are very close to finding very specific and direct ways of treating visual snow syndrome. However, uh, until that time, there's multiple treatments and, and lifestyle changes that we can use to treat patients with visual snow syndrome that have helped a lot. Now, they don't help for every patient. Um, they, uh, some, some treatments help for some patients, whereas others help for other patients. But I think it's worthwhile trying uh, all of them. Um, there is, uh, you know, medications unfortunately have not been proven to be that effective. I mean, we can give patients medications for, uh, for uh, uh, you know, hypertension, for blood pressure, for seizures, antidepressants. They've all been tried and they've not had a lot of success. Um, and so until that time, I think the following strategies are, are very useful. There are certain visual adaptation exercises you can do for your eyes that have helped a lot of people. Um, if you go to YouTube, if you go to the Visual Snow Initiative website, if you go to Facebook, you'll find these, uh, you know, these visual adaptation exercises that you can do at home uh, in front of a screen that have been actually helped a lot of people, not everybody. And so that's one thing. Um, the other thing you can try is really your diet. You know, I find that going to a sort of a, a, um, a, a sort of a, 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 a um, autoimmune diet, meaning uh, you know, sort of decreasing your gluten, um, decreasing things that elicit inflammation uh, in your diet, meaning a diet that, that that's rich in red meat. I'm not saying stop red meat, but something that's rich in red meat. All these things that that elicit an immune response in your body or inflammatory response, you should maybe decrease. Change your nutrition. You know, have green leafy vegetables. Um, you know, uh, decrease your fats, uh, increase your proteins, all, all these things that have been shown in some patients uh, to really help. The uh, 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 other things you can use is, as I mentioned, as I've mentioned in the past to many of my patients, is, is wearing tinted glasses. I think the FL41 tint is very effective in really decreasing some of the symptoms of visual snow, whether it's the pixel, pixels themselves, the snow itself, whether it's photophobia, which is decrease uh, in light vision, uh, oh, sorry, increased light sensitivity, I'm sorry. Uh, whether it's the entopic blue phenomena, I think tinted glasses have really helped uh, patients deal with their headaches and things like that. The other thing you can do um, is, um, is, you know, um, basic lifestyle changes. I know a lot of my patients have been helped with meditation, with mindful um, meditation, with um, yoga, um, with, with exercise, all these things that really help patients a lot in calming the stressors that are going on uh, in their minds. And also changing your home environment, decreasing your lights, uh, decreasing the clutter around your home, uh, keeping it clean, I think has helped a lot of patients as well. The other thing that has really helped uh, is CBD or cannabis oil. You can try it with a THC free, which is THC is the active ingredient in cannabis that gives you that high. You don't necessarily have to take it with that. There are There is oil you can get without the THC and that helps a lot. I think in many countries in the world, um, I know here in Canada, it's legal um, and especially for medical purposes. And that has helped a lot of patients in focusing and kind of decreasing all that stimuli that makes them very, very uncomfortable. And that, I think that's probably one thing that's helped most of my patients um, among the patients that, that, that have been helped is CBD oil. The other thing is that I think other things that you can do is accept the fact that you have this and you can't change it, you can't control it, and that's okay, right? There's, I think accepting the fact that you have no control over this is, is one step in taking control of yourself. Because you know what, it's okay to not have control over it. That helps you deal with it better. You know, get a good, in addition to that, get a good support of family and friends who know you have this. Educate the people closest to you in your close circle, whether it's at work, whether it's at home. Tell them, listen, I've got this, I can't control it. Help me deal with it or support me when I'm dealing with it. And they'll be there for you, supporting you. And the last thing I think is, you know what? take care of yourself. We are our own best advocate, okay? Uh, like I said before, exercise, sleep well, um, uh, eat well, um, have a positive attitude to life, um, and keep in touch with Visual Snow Initiative, with Facebook, online, or whatever is going on. I think that kind of, that's the approach I, I generally give my patients when they come in. Um, and then I do a follow-up if I need to, or if they need to come in and see me. And just to let them know that they're not alone in this and that they have people who believe in them and know what they're suffering through.